Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Stop, Look, and Listen. I'm your host, Troy Gardner. Uh, this week, we have world-renowned violinist. Um, he just dropped a month ago his fifth studio album, Gemini. We got uh, Damien Escobar on the show. Welcome to the show, Damien. Yes, yes, man. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me, man. All right, no doubt, no doubt. Um, you know, let's let's just start start from the beginning. When did you fall in love with the violin? Whew, man, I fell in love at six, six years old. It was brought into the house. Had older siblings who took the uh, the program in third grade, and you know I waited my chance to learn. It was my turn, and by the time I was uh, in third grade, two years later, I just flew with it. I loved it. Yeah. So from that point to um, graduating from the the school of Juilliard at age twelve, like man, it yeah. was an, an got, accelerated process there. Yeah, I got good quick, man. I mean, I practiced <laughs> six, seven hours a day every day for a wow. year. Yeah, for like a year straight. I did that for like maybe three, four years straight, six, uh -huh. seven hours a day. I got really good really quick. Like I was just glued to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I like some kids, they sit there, they play video games six hours straight because they love it. That was me with the violin. Right. Just played it all day long, man. And pff, that quick, boom. It's like yeah. anything. You apply yourself to something, mm -hmm. you'll get good at it. Yeah. You know, like I had a natural ability without a doubt. Um but I worked at it, you know, and I still work at it 30 years later, you know, mm -hmm. so it's nonstop. OK. All right. So from your debut Central Melodies uh, yeah. to Gemini, compare and contrast uh, the young Damien Escobar from then to now. Oh, man, it's like day and night, dude. Like that's um, I was still in my 20s when I did Central Melodies. You know, it was uh. And that was crazy, man, because I was just like, you know, let me I was fresh out with the group. I'm like, I just want to throw something out there as a as a solo artist. And that it went on to do crazy numbers that mixtape. It was just a mixtape. Mm -hmm. Um and it did well, you know. So it, you know, I'm looking at that from then to now. I mean, just the maturation as a man, as a musician, so much has happened. You know, 10 years is a good chunk of time, man. Like a lot happened in 10 years. Like we, I mean, Two more kids happened in 10 years. You know, like a lot, like a yeah. lot happened, you know, just like divorce, new relationship, marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot that happened. And then that you grow up a lot. You know, you got to go through some things, man, that really shape who you are. And um, from Central Melodies to Gemini, I think people can hear the maturity and the sound and the music and understanding who I am as a man and an artist. Um, mm -hmm. That really comes through. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah, so, uh, oh, go ahead. Now, go ahead, man. All right. Cool. So, um, you describe uh, Gemini as a journey through the ups and downs of life. You you just mentioned, you know, divorce, the maturation, um, you know, the pandemic, which I'm sure we'll touch on, and how you pivoted during that time. Um, just take us behind the scenes of the creative process of Gemini. I mean, it was a it was a great collaboration. I got some great you know, just writers in there with me, you know, some of my favorite writers that I write with, you know, we just got in the studio and we, you know, we just started writing again. And, and it was just, it just felt like um, what the process used to feel like for me, where it was like, I wasn't creating to create for a specific subset of people or, you know, that's a tough thing. Like, right. When you go, when you do albums, your, your music has an audience, but as mm -hmm. an artist, you want to continue to grow your sound, but people know you for something. You know, so you kind of get caught into, oh, man, I don't want to lose my fans and blah, blah, blah. And you get stuck there for a minute as an artist, you know, but this process was different. I'm like, I'm just going to put out the piece of the body of work that I want to put out and, you know, let it find this, let it find its audience. Right. And that's what I did. And, you know, my audience were along for the ride. They they loved the album, picked up some new ones along the way. And everybody's happy. Right. So Gemini features eight tracks. Yeah. Um, how does the um, dual personality traits of a Gemini play out in your music? Um, it doesn't so not so much in the music, but in creating the music. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like getting to the point because I'm not a studio rat by any means. There's some cats that are being in the studio all day, all night. That's not me. Um, I love being in the studio to write. I'm pro I'm a project based artist. Like I'm like, all right, what's the mission? All right, let's go. 
Um, but but being a Gemini, you know, people tell you Geminis are wishy washy. You know what I'm saying? Like we we are super wishy washy, and we're wishy washy to ourselves. Not really other people. Like we'll show up for other people, but to ourselves and our mission, we can be wishy washy at times. And I, that's what that process was like for me in the studio, man. Just like, damn, do I want to do it? I don't want to do it. Do I want to do it? I don't want to do it. Going through that and and growing through that um was really on display but once i committed to it you know a gemini you think about some of the best artists in the world with gemini's man and are gemini's man like mm -hmm. the, the princes of the world like some yeah. brilliant minds say what you want about kanye but yeah. kanye is one of the most brilliant creative minds to to exist in our lifetime andre you know, 3000 kendrick Stack, lamar kendrick lamar like there's so many gemini's you know so um once we commit to the work it's going to be a great body of work Mm -hmm. Full stop. All right. So tell me about, um, let's see, a few of my favorite songs on, on a project. I was gravitating towards um, Mercury Rising. Ooh. Yeah, that's my that's my shit. Uh, Mercury Rising, man. Like, I mean, the title speaks for itself, man. Like, it's, it's a lot of passion. It's a lot of love in that song. It's a lot of tension. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Um, we wrote that song. That was one of the first songs we wrote when we went in to do this album. We started this album in 2021. So that was one of the first we did. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of my favorites off the record. You know, it's, um, it's, it's solid. I love the song. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think that's a lot of people's favorite on the record. Yeah. Um, another one, I think you, I mean, you closed it out <laughs> with Prelude. Woo, uh, yeah, that was yeah. another favorite of mine. Yeah, that joint is fire, man. Like that was... Um, and it's different sonically from anything else on the project. Like the sonically is such a different song, but I love that. That's like, that's more like old me, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's like more so, that's not a far departure. Of like if you listen to my previous music, like Awaken and um, Freedom and songs like that, this is like sonically within the same world of that. So I wanted to do something on this project that was still had a bit of that earlier dame in it. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm glad you're liking it because I love that song too. Oh, yeah. Dr. Todd McLean provides periodontal and dental implant services in two convenient locations. They offer over a decade of experience treating patients and appointments can even be scheduled in the evenings, weekends, or early mornings. Give them a call in Chapel Hill at 919-537-9774 or in Durham at 919-484-8338 or visit them online at gumsandimplants.org. All right, um, Deja Vu with, with Jeff Lorber. Yeah, that's, that was a dope How one. did that collaboration come about? Great song. So, Claude Villani, Claude Villani, he's a CEO of the label that I'm signed to. He's an incredible songwriter. Um, and Claude and I, you know, he signed me uh, 2022. Claude mm -hmm. signed me. Um, and we released Taboo uh, last year. We released Taboo. So, he and I, have been working together like beyond just the relationship of a CEO and an artist. He's a brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. um, so he did Taboo. And then um, when we were talking about what we wanted to take the album this year, he said, I got something for you. I got a, I got a song for you. And he took out his guitar and he started playing the chords. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy. And um, he said, I want Jeff. Jeff is on a label. He said, I'm, I'm writing with Jeff right now. Um, what do you think about Jeff um, being a part of this? I'm like, Jeff Lorber, like Lorber. He's like, yeah, I'm like, right, yeah, Jeff Lorber has to be a part of it. Uh -huh. um, so Jeff produced a song uh, with Claude. And what you hear is 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 what we came up with in this out in the world. And I'm so proud of that record. It feels good. It feels like modern Sade. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's the vibe. It's like modern Sade. You throw that shit on and you could do whatever you want with it. You know, you could cook. You could be in the car. It's just... It has that baseline like that's that's infectious. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Love that record. All right, last one. Just talk about Symphony of Romance. Woo! Now that's that's um that's one of my favorite songs on the record. I was just in Harlem yesterday. We shot a video for Symphony of Romance. That's the next single that's dropping. Um, it's a yo, it's the first instrument to two step. You know what I'm saying? Of this modern era, you know. Uh, and I performed it in a few shows already, and people just. It, yeah. it embodies that like people are moving man like it's it's exactly that it's a celebration 
you know what I'm saying? It's a celebration of excellence, you know, at every level. Like you have permission to celebrate whatever is excellent to you in your life. And we're going to dance to that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that's what Symphony of Romance is about. Um, another great writer worked on that with me. Um, Jay Dibbs, unbelievable writer. He wrote back in the day for like uh, Aaliyah and all these other great artists. Um, yeah, I love that record. That's one of my favorite. Uh-huh. All right. So kind of uh, backpedaling a little bit, um, just talking about um, the barriers you've broken um, in the genre. Like what advice would you give to um, up and coming uh, contemporary violinists, you know, who aspire to follow in your footsteps? Yo, just stay consistent, find your sound and stay consistent with your sound. Like there's a lot of there are a lot of shortcuts you can take, you know, but create what's what's authentic to you irrespective if right now you only got one person supporting it, like good music will find its audience full Mm -hmm. stop. And if you stay consistent enough, it'll happen. Like it'll pop. But more importantly, the work should not be about you trying to get famous or what you can attain. The work should really be about how can that music just influence one person? How can it help one person? And if it can do that, and if the product is good, if the music is good, it's going to do what it has to do. Right. Um, do you learn more from your wins or your losses? Losses all day long. Mm-hmm. I love I love failing, man. I ask my kids, yo, how'd you fail this week? You know what I'm saying? Like my daughter, she's turning 18. I, and she, I've been asking that since she's a little girl. Tell me how you failed this week because I don't care about how you win. Anybody can win. You know, we don't we don't learn through wins. We learn through losses. You know what I'm saying? Like being able, there's a certain lesson in losing, having the ability to get up and just keep going. Mm-hmm. which is something that's so difficult for people. Once people get knocked down, a lot of people just stay down. Majority of us just stay down. But in learning through failure, you can tweak what didn't work. And it's all a part of it. Like this, there's so many things that I do and put out that, that don't work, but I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on trying. I, I'm going to tweak it and find it. You know, it's like cooking the perfect dish. You know, a chef is like, ah, I need more salt. This need more garlic. This need it. It's, it's just the way it works. It's trial and error. It's, you know, I just think there's a stigma around the word failing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's a stigma that just needs to be destigmatized, man. Like it's it's learning. It's it's growing as you learn, you know? So um, I learned through through growth, man. And I grow through everything. Yeah. Like what's the most valuable lesson? Because like um, your story is well chronicled when it comes to um, the depression and the homelessness and um, you know, splitting up, you know, with your brother, but yeah. you came back stronger than ever every time. So like just talk about like during those down down moments, like yeah. what what motivated you to push forward and you know come back and be be the best version of yourself? My mom, man. My mom is a beast. I watch my mom uh persevere. You know, like my mom is going to be 70 soon and she's still getting up, going into South Bronx, Bronx, teaching at risk kids every morning. And I, I see her mission and I see her, you know, try new things. It doesn't work. She keeps going. It's like it doesn't phase me, you know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't phase me. You know, I'm like, nah, OK, cool. You tell me no, no. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to find a way to innovate and get it on my own. You know, I'm like, okay, you don't want to give me a shot? I got this idea. It doesn't work. No problem. Let me show you that it works. And I'm going to show you on my own. And guess what? At that point now, I own it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, I've, I've been this way, man. I've been competitive since I can remember. You know, right. like it's, it is what it is. The, the, the greatest thing you can do for me is doubt me. Because uh-huh. that fires me up. Straight okay. up. I mean, so what does success mean to you today? Succession. Success for me is succession. What what can I pass down to another person? I can't take this with me. You know, like who can I pass this knowledge down to? You know, be it my kids, be it a an up and coming musician. Uh, there's so much in here that I haven't even scratched the surface on being able to share mm-hmm. um, because I'm usually pretty closed off and I'm learning how to be more open, you know, with my process. Um, a lot of people just see the end result with me, but they don't see the process that goes into it. And um, I'm at the point now in my life where I feel like I've uh, achieved enough to be able to um, show people the way. Right. Because I've, I've, for an instrumentalist, I've reached the promised land. 
Uh-huh. You know, like it's um, I can teach this now. You, right. you get what I'm saying? So the greatest success for me is succession. It's not about what I can attain, what I can buy, how much money I make. I'm not motivated by that. It's who's coming up behind me. What world am I leaving behind? And and who can I pass this down to to carry the torch? Right. Um, what's your favorite instrument to listen to outside of the violin? Uh, viola or cello, piano, guitar. Um, the violin is not my favorite instrument. <laughs> It's not my favorite instrument. Um, I love the violin. I play it. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I love instruments that can that have a deeper tone, a richer tone, like the cello. It's right. just beautiful, man. The viola, beautiful. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what's something about you that your fans would find most surprising? Mm, that I, in addition to being a, a music artist, I lead music globally for one of the largest advertising companies in the world. Yeah. And it's, it's Havas. That's right. Yeah. Havas. Right. Yeah. Havas. Yeah. How, how did that opportunity come about? Uh, through COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my clients, I have a, a, a management company. One of my clients was on Good Morning America. One of the agencies from Havas reached out to do something with them. Um, and I got really friendly with the president of the agency and he didn't know what I did as a musician. Um so, you know, once he did discover it, he asked me to join his agency as music director. And I politely said no, um, because I didn't have time. Like, I never had a job before. I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, but curiosity got the best of me. It was over COVID. I'm like, I'm not really doing much. I'm not touring, you know, like, so I, I wanted to know why. I wanted to know what was happening behind the scenes, like who's picking the music for brands and how does that all work? Mm-hmm. And we agreed to do it for six months and I got in there and I fell in love and I've been juggling it for four years, growing massively through the ranks to now I'm the first global chief music officer at a um, at one of the largest holding companies um, in the world. You know, so I'm, I'm breaking down doors in this space, too, especially as um, a black man. Um, we don't really reserve these seats at this level. Um and I help some of the biggest brands shape their sound story, their use of music, music driven creative. I've contributed to some of the biggest commercials, you know, people probably wouldn't even know that I was working on and just brand moments and different partnerships at festivals. Like it's a it's a whole nother world for me outside of Damien, the artist that people mm-hmm. have no idea about. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, Damien. So what do you see when you look in a mirror? Uh, you know what? I see a man, you know, 38 years later, still standing strong, still smiling, still loving people, um, still curious, still, you know, just still feeling like there's so much to learn this, this, and, and also realizing I know absolutely nothing. And that excites me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I just, I want to, I want to soak things up, you know, that's, Uh that's where I'm at right now in my life. I want to, what, what else can I do? What else can I what else can I attain? I want to learn new things. That's where I'm at. Okay. Well, speaking of that, what's next for you? Um, next year, I got a tour um, coming through. Um, but in the immediate, I don't know, dude. I'm just getting through the day. You know, like it's. I don't. I don't. I don't go too far as far as you know outlook. I just take mm-hmm. it 24 hours at a time. If I get that, I'm good, man. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens next. But right now I'm focused on Gemini, um, getting this record into the world more and more. It's a great body of work. I'm proud of it. I got the music video releasing for Symphony of Romance shortly. Um, and people are going to see it. They're going to love it. All right. So where can we find you on social media and just type obviously Damian Gemini Escobar. as well? Yeah, type Damien Escobar, type Dame Esco, type Black Guy with the Violin on Google. I pop up, seriously. Um, Gemini is everywhere you stream music. Yeah. All right. Is there an opportunity or or a gig that has eluded you that you still want to scratch off the bucket list? Ooh. Um, I want to play at Carnegie Hall, and I want to play at the Royal, um, Royal Albert Hall in London. Two venues I want to hit. I want to play there, and I want to play at Radio City. Radio City Music Hall in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably that's probably it for me. I, th- I think I've gotten a lot in music, just right. as far as other things. Last year, I got my first number one 
uh, record in the country. I, I you know, th- that was on a bucket list, but you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. All right. All right. So Damien Escobar, Gemini out now, violinist extraordinaire, very humble guy. Enjoy this Thank conversation. You, Thank um, you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Look for him. Look for him at Radio City Music Hall. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to put that in the atmosphere. Oh, All right. Yes, so, All right. So for Stop, Look and Listen, I'm your host, Latroy Gardner. See you next week. Peace and blessings. <laughs>